Meet Linda. Linda is the new COO at the organization. She's eager to hit the ground running, and one of her priorities is to get the organization compliant with the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard, PCI DSS. At a meeting with Information Security Officer Alex, Linda inquires about PCI DSS in order to better understand the task at hand. What exactly does PCI DSS entail, she asks, and why did it come about in the first place? Alex goes on to explain what PCI DSS is all about. Everything started when the credit card companies began having a significant increase in fraud. Different credit card companies, including Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and others, decided to create a council to create and enforce an international security standard applicable to the credit card industry. That is when the credit card companies created the Payment Card Industry Security Standards Council. The council is responsible for the development, enhancement, and dissemination of international security standards for credit cards. The security standard our organization needs to comply with is the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard, PCI DSS. The PCI DSS applies to all entities that store, process, or transmit cardholder data. It is also applicable to all service providers that provide security services to protect cardholder data, such as a firewall management service. Organizations are classified in one of four levels, depending on the volume of payment card transactions they process. Level 1 includes the organizations with the largest volume. These organizations are required to undergo an independent annual security audit, performed by a PCI-certified company, which has been previously certified by the Council. Linda chimes in, Huh, that makes sense. And what are the requirements that we need to comply with? Alex continues, the PCI DSS is based on security best practices. A summary of some of the most essential requirements include, goal one, build and maintain a secure network and systems, implement and maintain properly configured firewalls and change default system user IDs and passwords, implement and enforce comprehensive security configuration standards. Goal two, protect cardholder data. Limit cardholder data storage and retention time to that required for business, legal, and or regulatory purposes. Protect cardholder data in transit and at rest via the use of adequate encryption practices. Goal 3. Maintain a vulnerability management program. Implement the use and ongoing updates of antivirus and malware protection tools and ensure that they produce adequate logs of activities that are monitored by qualified organizational staff. Also, ensure that the organization develops and maintains secure systems and applications. Some of the controls required for this goal include integrating the use of reputable vulnerability reporting entities, performing periodic vulnerability scans, and implementing secure application coding, testing, and program change practices. Goal 4. Implement strong access control measures. Restrict logical and physical access to cardholder data on a need-to-know basis. Identify and authenticate access to all systems by using strong authentication practices, passwords, and encryption. Goal 5. Regularly monitor and test networks. Configure events in logs to track user activity and monitor logs on a regular basis. Perform required quarterly network vulnerability scans. Merchants need to perform penetration tests annually or after a significant system change. The penetration tests that are required include external network penetration tests, internal network penetration tests, and web application penetration tests. Internal network segmentation must be also validated during internal network penetration testing. For service providers, the validation of segmentation and internal penetration testing needs to be done at least every six months or after a significant system change. Goal 6. Maintain an information security policy. Ensure that the organization has comprehensive and up-to-date security plans, policies, standards, and procedures. Also, ensure that the organization performs regular security risk assessments, 
develops, tests, and updates a comprehensive security incident response program, implements a robust security awareness and training program, and ensures that third-party vendor contracts have the adequate security coverage. All right, understood. What's your plan for us to become compliant then? Linda asks. Alex tells Linda that PCI DSS compliance is a continuous process that consists of three primary steps. The first step includes the identification and analysis of all IT assets, business processes, and locations used in storing, processing, and transmitting cardholder data for vulnerabilities. Second, all identified vulnerabilities must be remediated and may include the implementation or change of systems, business processes, and business partners. Last, your state of compliance must be documented in a Report of Compliance, ROC, or a Self-Assessment Questionnaire, SAQ, depending on the PCI DSS level. Additionally, the Attestation of Compliance, AOC, has to be completed by a qualified security assessor or by the merchant if the internal audit performs the validation. The AOC is a declaration of the merchant or service provider's compliance status with the PCI Data Security Standard. I'm assuming there are penalties for non-compliance, right? Linda queries. Absolutely, says Alex. The enforcement of compliance with PCI DSS and any non-compliance penalties are carried out by the individual credit card payment brands. Entities may also suffer from diminished sales, fraud losses, and legal costs associated with the breach of cardholder data. All right, Alex, looks like we have a plan. Thanks for being on top of this, says Linda. Be smart, be aware, be secure.